It was a cloudy autumn morning when James and Maria decided to take one last trip to their favorite beach before their little one arrived. Maria was nine months pregnant and her due date was fast approaching, but she was determined to make this final memory before the arrival of their first child. Although James was hesitant about going, he could see the excitement in his wife's eyes and decided to go along with her plans. As they packed their bags, James decided to bring his Polaroid camera to capture some special moments on their trip. They set off early in the morning, driving through the countryside as the sun began to rise. The scenery was breathtaking, with the trees turning shades of red and orange and the mist rising from the fields. When they arrived at the beach, they were delighted to find that they had the entire place to themselves. The weather was cool but comfortable, and the sound of the waves crashing against the shore was soothing. Maria was overjoyed to be there and she smiled as she breathed in the fresh sea air. James took out his camera and began taking pictures of his wife, capturing her beauty in the soft light of the morning sun. As they walked along the beach, they talked about their hopes and dreams for their child, imagining what kind of person he or she would grow up to be. As they walked along the picturesque beach, James eagerly snapped away with his camera, determined to capture every last moment of their childless lives together. Maria smiled and posed for the photos, enjoying the sound of the waves crashing on the shore. After taking several shots, James eagerly waited for the Polaroids to develop. When they finally did, he grabbed them with excitement, but as he looked at the first picture, his expression changed to one of alarm. What's wrong, Maria asked, quick to sense her husband's distress. James did not reply at first. He stood completely still, staring intently at the Polaroid in his hand. Maria walked over to him, her heart racing with worry and confusion, and took a look at the photograph he was holding. At first glance, it looked like nothing special, but then she noticed something very peculiar in the background of the picture, something that shouldn't have been there, though she couldn't quite make out what it was. It was enough to send a chill down her spine. James and Maria stood in silence for a moment, both trying to process what they had just seen in the Polaroid picture. Maria's heart was racing, and she felt a sense of dread wash over her. She looked around the empty beach, but there was no one in sight. James finally spoke, breaking the tense silence. We need to do something, now. What initially appeared to be a harmless photo of Maria turned out into something completely different. In the background of the photograph, something terrible could be seen in the water. We need to call someone, said Maria. But when checking their cell phones, it but turned out that they had no reception. They quickly ran to the spot where the photo had been taken, and looking out into the water they were horrified to see that the photo was not lying. There was a creature some 80 feet out into the sea, and it was clearly in distress. Maria's instinct was to help. Heard the creature, but James was hesitant. The creature appeared to be a shark, and he was worried about the potential danger of getting too close. However, Maria was determined to do what she could to save the creature. As with no phone signal to call for help, they knew that it was up to them to save the creature. They slowly started to wade into the water, getting closer and closer to the thrashing creature. When they were only a few feet away from it, James took a sharp breath. Maria, wait. I know what that is. Maria's heart sank as James spoke. She had never seen him look so serious before. She stopped in her tracks and turned to face him. What do you mean, she asked, her voice trembling slightly. James took a deep breath before replying. It's not just any shark, he said slowly. It's a great white. Maria felt a chill run down her spine. She knew that great whites were one of the most dangerous predators in the ocean. Her instinct was to back away slowly, but she couldn't bear the thought of leaving the shark to struggle and probably die. We have to help it, she said firmly, her voice shaking with fear. We can't just leave it here, Dot James hesitated for a moment before nodding in agreement. Together, they carefully approached the shark, keeping a safe distance from its thrashing body. But it quickly became clear that they could not help the animal by themselves. Great whites were some of the most dangerous creatures in the ocean, and on top of that, Maria's advanced pregnancy limited her ability to help without endangering her baby. We need to find a way to contact the Coast Guard, Maria declared urgently. However, they faced a daunting challenge. The absence of cellular service left them with no means of communication. 
Just then, they noticed an old man walking towards them, They're yet still quite far away on the beach. He was carrying a metal detector and a large cart with flotsam. Maria started to wade back to shore in hopes of getting the man's attention. As the man drew closer, Maria swiftly briefed him on the dire situation. Without a moment's hesitation, the man began to clear his cart of debris. Let's move the cart towards the creature and use it to lift it up so we can assess its condition, he suggested with a determined tone. With the old man's help, Ames and Maria managed to drag the cart over to the helpless shark. The creature was struggling to breathe, and it became evident that it had become entangled in some fishing nets. Together, James and the old man worked carefully, looping a rope around the shark's tail and gradually pulling it, pulling it towards the waiting cart. The shark was on the brink of exhaustion and had hardly any strength left. This did, however, allow the old man to get close enough to and started meticulously cutting away at the nets some of which were deeply embedded in the shark's flesh. Maria's heart ached as she whizzed as she whispered, I hope we're not too late, as the final strands of net were severed. The old man warned that their only chance to save the shark was to push it past the surf, because the creature's weakened state left it unable to swim past it on its own, though the old man cautioned that the shark would regain some of its strength in deeper waters and pose a significant threat. Despite the danger, James and Maria were determined to see their mission through. We've come this far, James declared resolutely. We're not giving up on this magnificent creature now. With the old man's guidance, James and Maria pushed the cart and the shark past the breaking waves. As they entered the deep water, the shark slowly regained its strength and began to swim. Air James and Maria watched in awe as the magnificent creature disappeared into the ocean depths, finally free from the confines of the fishing nets. As they made their way back to the shore, Maria and James felt a sense of accomplishment and gratitude. They were grateful for the old man's expertise and assistance, and they felt privileged to have played a role in saving the life of one of the ocean's most awe-inspiring creatures. Just then, Maria's scream echoed across the beach, causing James to freeze in terror. What's wrong? He asked frantically. Oh no, Maria gasped. I think it started. Because they had been standing waist deep in the sea, Maria had not noticed that her water had broken. They were miles away from the nearest hospital with no cell phone reception. James felt a surge of panic rising in his chest. Dot, this was exactly why he had been hesitant to go. But, but to the beach this morning, it was his worst nightmare come to life. Thankfully, the old man stayed level-headed. Don't worry, he reassured them. We'll get you to the hospital in time, he instructed James to lay Maria on the cart, and they carefully made their way to the car. Herod, with Maria in the back seat and James by her side, the old man took the wheel, expertly navigating the winding roads towards the hospital. Maria was in agony, and James felt utterly helpless as he watched her suffer. The old man's calm voice and steady driving helped to soothe their nerves. My name is Francis, by the way, and don't worry, the hospital is less than an hour away. It turned out that Francis had five children of his own and was grandfather to 16 kinds. Luckily for James and Maria, he had quite some experience with births. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, they arrived at the hospital. The medical staff rushed to take care of Maria and James felt a wave of relief wash over him as he watched them wheel her into the delivery room. As he paced the hospital corridors, James thought back to the events of the morning. What had started out as a leisurely day at the beach had turned into a life-changing experience. He felt grateful for the old man's kindness and expertise and he knew that he would never forget the role that they had played in bringing their child into the world. After several nerve-wracking hours, James was finally called into the delivery room. As he walked in, he saw Maria holding their newborn child in her arms, tears of joy streaming down her face. James felt a lump in his throat as he gazed at his wife and child. They had a son. As they held their little one, they couldn't help but think about the incredible series of events that had brought them to this moment. They were filled with gratitude for the old man who had helped them save the shark and then assisted them in getting to the hospital on time. Their days passed, and James and Maria settled into their new role as parents. They couldn't stop talking about the beach experience and how it had changed their lives forever. They knew that they had been fortunate to have had the help of a stranger in a time of need. Eventually, James and Maria decided that they wanted to thank the old man for all that he had done for them. They went back to the beach, hoping to find him. They searched for hours, but he was nowhere to be found. As they walked back to their car, James spotted an old metal detector lying on the ground. It was the old man's, and he knew it instantly. He realized that he had to find him and return it to him. They went back to the beach every day for a week, 
asking around if anyone knew the old man, but, but nobody had seen him since the day they had met him. Finally, on the seventh day, they received a letter in the mail. It was from the old man thanking them for the incredible experience they had shared and expressing his own gratitude for the role they had played in saving the shark. He also included a key to a safe deposit box, telling them that he had left them a gift for their child. James and Maria were overwhelmed with emotion. They went to the bank and opened the safe deposit box, and inside they found a collection of rare seashells and a letter with the old man's name and address. They wrote him a letter back, thanking him for everything he had done and telling him how much they appreciated his kindness. They also sent him a photo of their newborn child. Years passed and James and Maria never forgot the old man and the incredible experience they had shared. They often thought of him when they took their child to the beach, and they felt grateful for the kindness of strangers that had led to the birth of their child. They knew that they would always cherish the memory of that fateful day at the beach.